This man is a police forensic expert. He's the father of criminal entomology. He uses maggots or flies to date the death of victims and determine the circumstances surrounding murders. His diagnosis contributes key elements to investigations. Califora Vecina. By the time Marcel meets murder victims, they are usually decomposed. By studying the development phase of the maggots in the body, he can determine the date of the crime. Marcel helped solve many of the crimes which shook Belgium over the last few years, particularly child abuse cases, as the maggots found in the children's nappies made it possible to determine for how long they had been neglected. The way in which fly larvae develop in bodies also makes it possible to determine cause of death by overdoses of cocaine and heroin. I was an expert witness in a case which had been dragging on for a year. 3,500 people had been questioned with no results and it was the larvae of a single fly found in the body of a partially carbonized adolescent which made it possible to fix the date of the murder exactly. The killer, who had also raped the girl, was condemned for life. Marcel's expert opinions have made it possible to wind up hundreds of cases. Depending on climatic conditions, the workers of death operate in different shifts. The first one is made up of Califora, alias the Blue Bottles, which attack in the hours immediately following the murder. The second fly squad moves in eight to ten hours after death. These are the layers, the green flies. And other squads include Coleoptera, Acarians, and other species of flies. These are fly traps. Hunting with wet umbrellas, Marcel and his wife have built up a huge collection. Look, you can see it so well. It's superb. Just look at its wings. Can you see, Marcel? There are no flies on Marcel. For him, fly catching is not a hobby, but the only way to be sure to identify all the different species found in criminal cases. Although their brain is no bigger than a pinhead, Califora flies can locate a decomposing body several miles away purely by smell. Its eyes can see through 360 degrees, which tell it the best way to land on the body. Philippe is a forensic doctor working in Kosovo to find evidence about genocide for the International Tribunal in The Hague. Marcel's area of expertise is therefore vital. Marcel, these are the first flies which got to the bodies. Yes, those are the blue bottles which are the first to arrive on bodies lying out in the open. In the open? That means that they were killed out of doors? Yes. Okay. And what are these flies? Those are tiny flies which burrow into the ground to get to a body buried up to one meter down. Yes, it was the clouds of tiny flies over the mass graves which helped me find the bodies underneath. Yes.
Walls may have ears, but bodies have transmitters. Akarians are real police informers for the forensic police. In this murder case, they can indicate, like fly eggs, very precisely by their presence and their stage of development, the date of death. They provide evidence while waiting for a full autopsy. Dr. James Webb is a mite specialist. Working as undertakers, mites can turn corpses into mummies before mold starts to decompose them. This time, James has brought back a chigger, a very rare mite in California. The chigger, this monster, loves places where the skin is thin, the buttocks and zones tightened by underclothing, like the breasts and the crotch. A few years ago, James solved the Ventura case, one of the strangest criminal affairs of his life, thanks to chigger mites. It was a one in billion chance that the suspect raped and killed this young lady in an area of high chigger infestation. And in the lineup with other suspects, he was the only one who had chigger bites. And with our research at the site and this information, it was key evidence that linked him to the scene of the crime because chiggers were also so rare in this area. Because of the weightiness of our information, I was advised to hire a bodyguard, and I also bought a weapon. Your attention, please. This is an important announcement. A black suitcase containing explosives has been detected by the anti-terrorist bees. It will now be destroyed by the police. This fiction is soon to become reality. Insects are being transformed into real indicators of illicit substances and pollution detectors for public services. Bees are the new elite troops, sniffing out letter bombs, detecting bacteria and viruses in bioterrorism alerts, and detecting mines on battlefields. Okay, Mathilde, now if you can sample. That's great. You can sample along the inside there. No problem. Thanks to the air inhaled via the tube, trained bees, enclosed in the blue box, are able to immediately detect the tiniest particle of explosive. John Wilkins, a scientist at Incense UK, the company that developed the system, gives a demonstration to the security services at the Parisian airport, Charles de Gaulle. In this box, we have the soldiers of tomorrow. We have trained the bees to detect explosives. They have an incredibly good success rate. Could you tell me what is the reaction of the bees when they detect an explosive? When the bee detects the explosive, it extends its proboscis, which is the scientific term for tongue. Here's a real-time chart of that process. When, the, when you see the extension, that's a hit. And if you see a hit like this, that means you must search the bag. Is there a risk that the passenger could be stung by the bees? No, absolutely not. The bees are safely harnessed within the bee sensor unit. These special agents operate as a trio. Each bee is connected to a sniffer tube. 
Their reactions are monitored by a micro camera that sends the image to a computer. The bees memorize a large number of different smells at very weak levels of concentration. Could ordinary domestic bees one day replace dogs in detecting explosives? Perhaps not, but the cost of their training is very low compared to their four-legged colleagues, and a single beehive could represent tens of thousands of winged security agents.